Hi, I'm going to share with you a little bit about the LiveScribe pen today. And this is their brand new pen. It's called the Sky Wi-Fi Smart. When you turn it on, you'll see that it's getting itself ready and it automatically syncs to the Wi-Fi that you've set it up with. Now, this is the notebook that I got with it. It's just the LiveScribe notebook, starter notebook. So let me show you exactly how this works. When I want to start recording and taking notes, I push record down at the bottom. And you can see the paper... I'm sorry, the pen starts to record my voice. So as I write, the pen records. So you can see that when I push stop, the pen stops recording and I've recorded for 16 seconds. So anywhere in my notes, if I push, let's do the word pen and listen. And then let's do the word right. Right. The pen reports. Okay, let me touch the word so the. You can see that the pen reports. So see, anywhere I touch my notes, it automatically plays back exactly what was being said at the moment that note was being written. So how do I use this in my classroom? Well, I've used it in centers by giving my students, you can see I've done this many different times, in social studies we're doing urban and rural communities, so you can see all the different groups that have went through the social studies station um, at school last week, and they all did the same activity. And how it started is, let me pick these up, it started with a blank sheet of paper like this, and I have it on a clipboard in a workstation in my room, along with the pen, and it's powered down. And the children, they go to, I'll turn the pen off and show you, is if I'm a student going to the workstation, I grab my clipboard and I have this clipped onto it, and then I grab the smart pen. And my partner and I, we go off and we look, and of course I've talked about this briefly at the beginning of the day before we start stations, but they know that they're to do an urban community with three characteristics, and as they're drawing, they're talking so that the pen tracks their thinking, and I can look into their thoughts with the pen. And then a rural community with three characteristics, and as they're drawing, they're talking. That's the power on, off, so when they get to the station, they turn the power button on, and then they push the dot to begin. I always make a dot to begin just to start them off. So the kids... Right, boys and girls, what I'd like for you to do is... And if they listen to all of these directions, I'm just going to stop it for a minute. If they listen to all of these directions and just need a certain part repeated, they can come and touch. Say partner two needs their part repeated. They'll touch right here. And in your rural community, you're also going to do three characteristics. And at Okay. So say that you need to go back to partner one and just touch right here. What is this part going to repeat? So all of my directions are right here on the sheet of paper for them. And then if the volume is too loud, I love this. And kids automatically get it because the buttons are very similar to what they're used to. So I'll go ahead and just play a certain part and then adjust the volume so you could hear that as well. I want you to draw three characteristics about your community, an urban community. And then for partner... So you can see as the volume, you can adjust it. You can also make the voice go up or down. So you can see you can speed that up or slow it down if you need to for playback. I tell my students not to touch the playback buttons, but if they need to adjust the volume, they can. And then when they go to start drawing their urban community, after they've listened to all of my directions, they know to come and just push record. So as my students decide to draw an urban community, maybe they say, I'm going to draw a really tall building because in an urban community, there are a lot of tall buildings. I'm also going to draw a lot of taxis because there are a lot of taxi cars in um, 
urban communities. There's a lot of people, too. A lot of people live in urban communities. The population is much larger than in a farming community or rural. And then these students would keep drawing. And uh, then when they're done, the person two, partner two, would go, and then they would draw a rural community. And maybe this partner would start to talk about the trees and then these spread out houses, how they're not as close together, the buildings aren't as tall. Maybe there's some farm animals. Yes, this is a cow. <laughs> um, so they would talk about their drawing. And then when both partners are done, they would push stop. And then when they're done, they would turn their pen off. When the workstation's finished, they would put this paper and clipboard with a pen right back into the drawer and I have a couple of these blank papers um, set up in the drawer so the next group that comes grabs the next paper and the next clipboard well at the end of the day when I go to check to see my students understanding or while they're at recess you know when I have a special or something and I can quickly kind of grade this so for reteaching points for to clarify for understanding all I have to do as a teacher is to turn on the pen and then I can listen to their thoughts by just playing any of this. So I'll go ahead and push play so you can hear what I was thinking as I literally just th drew this. Community, there are a lot of tall buildings. I'm also going to draw a lot of taxis. Because I'm going to draw over here. I'm going to touch down here. Maybe I need to go back up here. Um, so they would talk about that in an urban community, there are a lot of tall buildings. I'm also going to Maybe I need to go down here. Okay, so you can see that you can kind of just push all over. And then I'll show you what um, some of my children did. Um, the other day in their workstations. I never have them put names on it either. They all have numbers so that I could use these to share with you um, without you know, getting into the privacy features. But you can hear one of the kids. I'll go ahead and just start pushing around. And I'll draw some, I'll draw some cows too. And I'll draw some grass. <laughs> I'll push up here so you can hear this one. Okay, so you can just see kind of what the students have, have drawn. And of course, I did a lot of explicit modeling with this, so some of them do look quite similar. But as we go on and get more familiar with the tool, then... Um, the project itself will change. I want to share with you quickly before I stop how I used this with my four-year-old as well. Um, in the notebook, my son Jacob, who's four, I was trying to think how I could um, use this technology with him. So I want to share with you, we were working on practicing his name. So this is something that we recorded. I'll do the letter A to show you. Big line down, a big line down, and a little line across. And what letter is that? A. All right, good. That's an A. J A C. But a C is just a big curve, isn't it? Uh huh. A big curve. And here's Jacob making a C like or an A, yeah. sorry. And this is him trying independently and talking.
going to make next? C. Then to make a seaweed that you that like a curve. Then the other part is... And so you can see how Jacob practiced as well.